there. It's Sandy, and this is part one of two parts because I didn't finish the page that I'll be showing you. I was asked if I would show you how to make a sunflower, and I think it's this page the person was referring to. This one is done in watercolor. I'll be doing one in pencil, but it's the same technique. I covered the whole page in yellow first, and then started going in with an orangish color and defining a few of the petals coming out from the center, and the whole center was orange. And then I went in with a darker orange, and then went in with the brown, and just started pulling color from that middle puddle that was wet at the time, and pulling it out in between some of the petals to define them. I'm gonna do the same thing in colored pencil, but I'm also not gonna do it as a giant watercolor page because I've already done this page. I don't need two of the same page in my Bible, so I'm gonna do something a little bit different. And I'm going to do it in the front of my Bible. And there's kind of a special reason for this. I have been wanting for a while, and I'm motivated now because I recently went to a storytelling conference at my church. And it's something that really is near and dear to my heart to learn how to tell my story in the light of the gospel. And that's what this conference was aiming to do. Learning to do that helps when we are ministering to somebody, when we're talking to somebody about Jesus. A lot of people, and I, before I came to the Lord as an adult and you know had strayed for many years, I had a lot of people witness to me, but they didn't really know what they were doing, or at least they didn't do it in a way that spoke to me because I had a lot of people who just said, well, why don't you just believe? Because I just believed. That's all I had to do. And to me, that wasn't a winning message. <laughs> I was, not, I was not, not buying that. I needed something more. And I want to be the kind of person that would have won me over years back when, when I needed Jesus and nobody came and presented the message in a way that I could understand it. And I wanted a page in my Bible because... I show people my Bible on a semi-regular-ish basis, and I wanted to have a page that I could turn to and, and use that as a witness tool to be able to tell somebody my life story or a story from my life, not the whole thing, because, you know, that takes too long. Nobody wants to hear that much, but some way that I could illustrate what my experience of life with Jesus has been. And sunflowers weren't necessarily first on my list. However, I have been studying some of the old masters lately. I've been getting more into my fine art and looking back to some of my old heroes. And Van Gogh is one of them. I love his sunflowers. His sunflowers aren't just like, oh, happy sunflower. And, you know, just sort of vapid flower paintings like a lot of people will do. His had a mood to them. He seemed to paint the flowers after some of them had died. <laughs> if you look at his sunflowers or even any of his bouquets, you'll notice the colors are not super exciting and pink and yellow and bright and screamy and all that kind of thing. They're very muted. There's a lot of mood to the flowers. And I wanted to have some flowers on this double page spread that would be, yes, beautiful and full of life, full of joy. And I also want to have some that are not. I want to have some dead flowers in here. And I know that nobody else is going to want to do that in their Bible. This is my story. I encourage you to find something that represents your story in a way that makes sense to you. But to me, if I were able to sit down with somebody and explain to them that yes, life has its moments of utter joy and, and just lots of sunshine and happiness, that there, there is that. But there's also a lot of dead things in my life. There's sin in my life. There's pain in my life. There's things I've been through that are hard. And there's places where I can identify with somebody who hasn't come to the Lord and doesn't even realize that they need him. They don't know what it is they need, but they know they need something. And this, I hope, is going to end up being 
a beautiful page that I can just show them as a, a lovely piece of art, but that I can tell the story of my life through it. I can find ways to connect with them. I was at this storytelling conference and I was sitting at a table with a bunch of wonderful ladies. They're super sweet people. And we did some role playing to just talk about, you know, how would we minister to someone who's been through something like we had? And there's one lady who has been through a lot of, of tragic death in her family, you know, people who died too early. And so we role played. If she was talking to someone who, you know, had a relative who died, the only thing she could think of to tell them was, well, Jesus got me through it. I don't know. I just prayed and everything was fine. <laughs> I just thought, um, I'm not really sure how that helps someone who doesn't know Jesus, doesn't know how to hang on to him, doesn't know scripture. Because she, you know, brought out several verses that she thought would be helpful. And we need to find a way to better tell our story so that, as one of our pastors says, that it's more winsome than weird. Because we can come across sounding really weird. You know, it, it may be true that a particular Bible verse is something that we hung on to. But how do we voice that in a way that somebody can hear it? that the person who's listening to whatever it is we're talking about is going to understand what, what we mean. And they're going to realize what God can do for them too. And uh, this conference wasn't as helpful as I had hoped in that vein. I really wanted more from it, but nonetheless, it got me thinking a lot. And the friend that I went with, she and I have had several conversations about it. And I'm really excited to pursue more of this with the Lord. And I think this page is eventually going to be something that will be a good tool for me in that. So I have added a second yellow. So I did the first yellow and it was really rough. The second yellow, I tightened up a few of the petals, but I'm going in with the Gamsol and the blending solution again to loosen that up a little bit more because I didn't want too much detail in this because with what I'm picturing for this drawing, I just want it to be a beautiful piece of art. I don't want, I don't want anybody to get lost in details. I want the feeling to be there. So the feeling is what I'm going to be going for and we'll see how I get there. I liked how the first half came out. We'll see how the second half does, and I'll share that with you next week. But uh, the sunflowers that uh, Van Gogh paints have, you know, he just has a very simple shape for the center of it. He doesn't do as much of the um, bringing out of the dark color into each of the petals. And if you just go look up his pa sunflower paintings, you'll see what I mean. He has more of the yellows and the oranges doing that and more of a solid shape for the center of the flowers. But, you know, they're pretty easy to follow. And lots of the old masters, you can certainly Google any of your old favorite paintings by uh, famous artists and see if you can find something you can learn from them. I also didn't use some of the colors that he was using because he uses like strange purples and grays and things mixed in with the sunflowers and those aren't my colors. So just because he used them didn't mean that I have to, it just means I'm inspired to approach the flowers in a, kind of a similar vein, but with my own take on it. So I'm just bringing out some of the definition of a few of the petals radiating out from that center so that some of them appear there on top and some of them look like they're behind so that you have multiple layers of petals. There are some flowers that don't have more than one, one round of, I guess, round one, one circle of petals, but these are sunflowers that have multiple, so you, you see parts of some of them in behind. And I was looking at how much of the bright yellow that Van Gogh left visible on his flowers, and he knocked back a lot of it with more of a golden 
orangey yellow color. So that's what I thought I'd try here as well, leaving just some of it in that very, very bright original yellow. But I'm not going to put you through watching all of the flowers being drawn because that's a lot of sitting here coloring. But I was trying to figure out then what to do with the background because I wanted something similar-ish to what Van Gogh did. But he had a kind of a dusky teal color that he used. And I don't have a teal color in the collection of polychromos pencils. There is no teal like that. So I needed a dusky blue-green color if I wanted to have the flavor that he had going on. So I started coloring and I'm doing negative coloring around the tips of the flowers to get those edges. So that blue is defining the edges of the flowers themselves. And then I'm layering some dusky green along with a blue. I don't have a dusky blue in this pencil collection. I thought about getting my Prismacolors out because there's more color options there, but I was too lazy to do that. So I just mixed two colors together. And when I used the blending solution, that kind of pulled them together. <clears throat> so now you can see a little bit more of where I was headed when I talked about him having some of those dead flowers in there. Because <laughs> I started putting a few of those in and look how beautifully they, they defined the live flowers. So the fact that there's just a few of these blobs of spiky dead greens and dead browns really brought out the colors in the brighter, more lively flowers. So I will see you again next week with a little more on this. I'll show you more about how I make the dead green flowers if you're interested in that. And I will see you next week. Take care. Bye-bye.